So in my opinion, the coach has to have a credential. I don't care what it is, but for them to be insured, they need to show a base minimum level of experience. And that is a current certification. Yes, I agree. I think that's fair. So what's the next thing that matters to you? If you're meeting someone off the street, you're doing a a free intro with them, you're sitting down and talking to them, deciding whether you should work with them or not. Uh, So I have a couple of things here. I, nothing, it's nothing too hard. Like you were just getting at with a certification, Mm -hmm. but also I think equally important. And one of the things I have listed here are basically, do they come across as someone who is basically a know-it-all or open-minded? Yeah. You know, I think, I don't remember exactly what, what, how the saying goes, but it's something along the lines of, you know, the more you, the closer you get to being a master at something, the more you realize that you don't know anything about it. Yeah. And I think that's really, that really rings true, at least in the sense of being, like I said, open-minded. So when I see somebody in any discipline, but, you know, we'll stick to the gym saying that there's only one way to do something or this is the best program or the only, you know, approach or fix to your problems. That's when I start. That's a red flag for me. That's a huge red flag, regardless of what it is. Even if I agree that the thing that they're saying is a good thing, you just have to be, you have to be aware enough that it's not the only thing and it's not appropriate a hundred percent of the time in all scenarios with everybody. So I'm going to put a word to it. I'm going to use the word rigidity. Okay. So if they have one program, one diet, one exercise, that's how it is. That's how it's always going to be. I agree with you. I can't like express this enough across all industries because different people, different program, different diet, different body type. There's so many things that go into it. There are like, I would argue that there are principles of strength and conditioning that are true all the time, no matter what principles yeah. right but how you handle those principles is up to you yeah it's really like i'm, I'm not a religious person really but it's like the 10 commandments yep. you know it's pretty much always true that you shouldn't kill somebody <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah how you live your life not killing people is up to you but you just shouldn't That's kill right. people you know yeah. and so there's certain principles of the of strength and conditioning i agree how you we should definitely that. talk about that at some time. Trying to come up with like the, the 10 principles. unbreakable laws of strength and conditioning. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty fun. So I think that you should also have the availability if this person is training people, I think having them be open to you talking to their other trainees is a green my, flag. That was on my list too. Not how you articulated it, but more so what are their... Uh, other trainees, what are they saying and how are they? Testimonials. Yeah. Testimony, not necessarily anything formal, but Mm -hmm. you know, if you have a chance to interact with them, how are they? Like, are they very positive about their experience? Are they negative just in general? Like might not be directly associated to the trainer, but it could, you know, it could be part of it. Yeah. And I, I would like to point out too, that people tend to stick with people of their own kind, right? So if I go to a gym and people look and act like me, maybe that works out, but don't let that stop you from working with a good trainer or a good coach. You know, just because you don't feel like you fit in immediately doesn't mean you don't actually fit in. So your commonality with people is that you like to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one thing that almost everyone should be able to get find in common. Yeah. So, I mean, I had a couple other notes down, like, uh, how healthy is your trainer? That's important to me. That's super important. I think, hmm, it is tough because, like, I think about a basketball coach, Mm -hmm. tons of good basketball coaches who can't play the sport themselves necessarily. Well, remember, they, they don't teach the individual how to play basketball. They teach the team how to win at basketball. That's true. That's a good point. I'm not that I know a whole lot about basketball anyways, so I don't really know how the coaching itself 
works. But regardless, I think you can be like an Olympic coach, Olympic lifting coach. You could be a great Olympic lifting coach and not be able to do it anymore because yeah. you're older and uh, your body's just not working that way. But I, I, I agree though. If I'm picking myself a trainer, I'm absolutely mm-hmm. going to look at a, like how do they look and how are they living their life? You know? Yeah. That's, I think that's more important to me. How are they living their life? If they have a gut, you know, or they're overweight, I don't really care so much as long as I know that they have a movement practice. Yeah. Well also like where are they coming from too? They might have yeah. a gut, but it might be a much smaller gut than a year ago. Right. And that's something I'll never know until I commit already. You wouldn't. Yeah. But, but no, finding out what they do is super important. I would be lying if I said that I didn't look at how they physically appear. Cause that's a yeah. fairly good indication of how somebody is doing, but also there's, there's plenty of people who look super healthy and are just like hopped up on like soda and candy all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. For real. So, so from there, I would, I would put that into a professionalism category, right? So do they walk the walk a little bit? Yeah. Do they, are they non-rigid? You know, do they sound like people you could have a cup of coffee with on Friday or Thursday? You know, someone you would actually want to hang out with. Um, what do their clients have to say about them? How do their clients look? And then I put cost. I want somebody for me, they have to be above cheap. I don't necessarily want to pay. So if I'm working with a trainer one-on-one tie, like you're my trainer, I don't want you to say, oh, it's, it's 20 bucks an hour for a personal training session. If yeah. you work at a Globo gym and I'm paying the Globo gym and they're like, oh, it's $20 an hour for personal training, I'm a little more likely to lean on that because it's a big corporate blah, yeah. blah, blah entity. But if there's an individual trainer training that much, you know, this isn't, they can't make a living off of that. Yeah, for sure. They can't make a living off of that. I think price is a fair one to include. I would, that would be the same. I don't know how somebody who doesn't know anything about the industry would perceive that, but I would definitely be looking bare minimum, anybody charging like 60 or 70 bare minimum. Yeah. Like that's the same is true for that top end. I don't want anyone coming in telling me it's going to be, you know, $200 an hour for the first, whatever, you know, too expensive to me means that this person, they're not for me. They're not my kind of trainer. Yeah. Also. Yeah, for sure. There could be some sort of business practice going on there where they know you're not going to stick around. So they're just trying to get as much out of you in a couple sessions as they can. Who knows? But yeah, there's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot for price. And for me, it's probably somewhere between that 60 to a hundred. Yeah. Range, you know? Yeah. That's exactly what I would want to pay. I mean, it's a little different, like a business mentor. I could see the rate being a little bit higher for like one-on-one time. Yeah. Um, but you can't buy back your health. You can't, it's impossible. Yeah. So this is more of an investment in yourself than it is a cost. Like, Oh, I have to pay $70 an hour for two or three days a week. Like, you can literally regain five, 10, 15 years of your life from working with a good coach. And if you work with a bad coach, you can lose it. Yeah. And there's one more thing I would put into the professionalism category that we kind of touched on already kind of deals with open-mindedness, but I'll just throw it in there. And that is if there are other trainers in the gym or if there are other gyms nearby, how does that, how does your trainer talk about those? Oh, that's a great point. You know what I mean? Great point. What is their relationship like with those people? But not necessarily, you don't have to be buddy, buddy, but how do they speak of their peers? Basically, if there's somebody who's just talking down on everybody else in their gym or more likely other gyms around them, then that's a red flag for me. Anyways, it's not open-minded. Yeah. Uh, it kind of, it has that know-it-all feel to it. And in any profession, that's not, that's not a professional way to carry yourself. No, that's a scarcity mindset. Yeah, exactly. A scarcity mindset. So that's something that I would say you're looking for a more evolved trainer. And as an adult, I feel like I want a trainer who's a grown up like me. You know, yeah. I say like me, like I don't like watching cartoons and eating cereal on a Saturday morning, but I, I want somebody who's a little bit, uh, just more relaxed, low key. Yeah. 
And I think, I think if you're listening to this and you're saying, okay, well, how exactly do any of these things tie into someone being a good trainer or not? Like you could be a great trainer and talk really bad about everybody, right? Yeah. Why, why can't you have both? But I think just from our personal experiences, we each have about 10 years in this industry, just being around, you notice correlations and that's yeah. all it is. These are just correlations that we're picking up on. Generally, the good trainers and the good coaches tend not to talk bad about people all the time behind their backs and stuff like that. I would say I would put them in the best category. Yeah. Right. Because if you worry about what other people are doing, you're not focusing on your own. You know, you don't need to to be like that. Yeah. To be the best. Yeah. So I, I agree with with uh with our list here. Having a certification, not being super rigid. Um what are their clients? How are they acting? What are they saying? How are they feeling? And you know, that open uh not talking bad about your peers, basically. Yeah, how they are, interact with their peers. That's a pretty good list, right? That's a solid list. And I'm going to start paying attention to those things every time I, I'm with a client. 